Well, me and Junior just came back from a shakedown run with the bikes. He got his new helmet. Helmet fits mint. Uh, he got the whack that thing a couple of times. We kept it slow. This thing is ridiculous with the nitro in it. I thought it was a handful before. You could be rolling at 10 miles an hour and just flip the throttle and the front tire comes off the ground. So. <sighs> nice. Nice. I've just, uh. I guess I've gotten a fear of it since the last time I really drove it. So. Yeah, we're getting ready. Um, the weather's supposed to be decent on Sunday. Not a problem. So. We're heading off to the races Sunday morning. We're gonna leave at like 8 a.m. Races start around 9:30, 10. I told uh, Hot Rod Ed I'd get there early, help them sweep or whatever they need. You know what I mean? And uh, give Junior a chance to drive around a bunch on that thing. So yeah, the neighbors seem to enjoy it all around the blocks. And uh, that's about about it. Uh, Roops has asked me a question about the power brakes. I can't really move this stuff while I'm thinking of it. Ruben wants to know that if he put power brakes in his Nova, would it require like an electric pump? Absolutely not, Ruben. An engine makes, all engines make about the same vacuum, unless you start to modify them, like this one and stuff like that. And. The bigger the cubic inch, the more modifications you could do to it and not have an engine vacuum loss. But your engine, probably at a gear idle, would probably make close to 20. And um, as opposed to this engine, at a gear, probably make like seven. <laughs> but you gotta remember something when you have the big vacuum booster. You start up the car, whatever it does, it draws a vacuum into that booster. That vacuum booster will only hold as much vacuum as you apply to it. So if the car's running and you go for a drive and the maximum pressure you put, or vacuum you put into it will say 20, that's what it's going to hold. Even if your engine turns off, you still have two or three good stops in it. Okay? That's why a lot of people... Uh, when they modify an engine, okay, and they use power brakes, a lot of times when they come to a stop, they'll downshift just to bring the engine vacuum up to keep it high in the booster. So they have power brakes, okay. But on some cars, that's a tricky situation. Like a car like this with a manual valve body, you got to be very careful because when you move that lever, it's going to do a gear change. Good, bad, or indifferent. So, but. Uh, the setup you need is basically the setup that Darren took out of his car. Um, I don't have one here to show you. I have one for the Concorde, but it's up in the rafters, buried in the back. Basically, what it's going to be is it's going to be. I wish I had a picture of an engine compartment. I do have a picture of the AMX engine compartment, but you can't see the one in here when the engine was hanging. Uh, basically, what it's going to be is you're going to have your firewall. Say this. This is your firewall. You're gonna have your four or two studs sticking out with the hole from where your brake booster, your master cylinder brake rod used to stick through. Your booster is gonna be mounted on a bracket. That's gonna bolt on there with four bolts. Then the rest of it's gonna be self-contained. You hook your brake lines back up the way you add them. And then you just run a vacuum hose, a fat one. Okay, whatever it is, I don't know if they're half inch, whatever they are, to manifold vacuum somewhere on the intake manifold. Okay, or on the base of your carburetor, you're gonna find a heavy vacuum line. In your case, it's blocked off. There's a plug in it. So you have manual brakes. You unthread that. You put a nipple on there, and you're good to go. It's a self-contained unit. Um, on the wagon behind me, the push rod definitely has to be changed, as well as the Concorde. When I got that brake set up from the guy, I got everything from the master to the end of the rod with the brake light switch on it. Because if you can get all that, it's golden. You could just slip it right in. And I don't know what the differences are between a Camaro and a Nova, but I know all Novas use pretty much the same firewall from 68 up. That I know. So, 
you have a wide variance of cause you can grab that booster out of. Um, it's definitely the way to go, Ruben. Manual disc brakes stop the car. They definitely stop the car. And this is not an insult, but women don't seem to enjoy driving it like that. Um, I mean, some do, some don't. It's a preference. Especially if they used to drive in a modern day car. See me, I drive old cars. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but with the manual brakes, like I said before, the brake pedal actually sits up higher. And to switch over from the gas to the brake, you got to lift your foot and put it there. As opposed to when you have power brakes, it's almost straight across like a modern day car. And I think that's what gets the people. You know what I mean? It becomes a chore to stop your car. And it becomes a chore to keep your car stopped at a light. If the idle is slightly high. Because you got to put the extra effort in there. You're not just resting your foot on there like power brakes. you got to put effort there to keep the car held back. Okay. Um, if you can get your hands on a booster setup... Ruben, it's the way to go. It's a no-brainer. You know, the old cars, uh, they were a little bit more touchy and sensitive. You know what I mean? Uh, where, like, they were almost, like, effortless to stop your car. As opposed to a modern-day car where they try to give you more road feel. Um, but, yeah, you don't need a vacuum pump. You don't need anything. Your engine puts out just as much vacuum as any other engine, Ruben. And, uh... Not a problem. When I put this wagon together, I was originally oh my dog shit on my lawn. I wish I had a fucking BB gun. Oh, oops, sorry, did I say that out loud? Nice. You know nothing nothing. When you walk your dog and you have a piss and shit on somebody else's lawn, why don't you have a piss and shit on your own lawn? Well, back to the story. Um, I forgot where it was. So Ruben, in so many words, find yourself a booster in a bracket. Put it in the car. The most you're going to have to do is either lengthen or change the front brake lines, depending on how they are. I could see in the Concord that they run the brake line right off the master and then it runs right into this block so it looks like you could just switch the two front lines uh some cars they actually give you enough room if you want to stretch them if you're not keeping like a restoration <laughs> you know what i mean there's a, a thousand different ways to hook up the brake lines just don't use the compression fittings and uh i guess that's about it i wish i had a better visual